which identify which assets at the current time are seeing higher than usual activity compared to their normal resting averages. So these four are standing out. The first one I'm looking at is Chili's. Chili's is seeing a few big things going on and two of the things that I'm highlighting right now that are clearly showing anomalies are its funding rate, which I'm highlighting here. You can clearly see that there's been a big, big short ratio that kind of started in early October, right around here, grew substantially right here as we saw a major rise. And then they settled down a little, but we're still seeing massive shorts compared to longs, which is not typical of most of crypto right now. So people are betting against Chili's right now. And I would assume that they're trying to be counter traders because if we go back to October 3rd or so, we see that the price is up almost, if not 30% or so, depending on the time of day. Um, and these past two weeks have just been huge outliers uh, for this asset compared to most of the rest of the altcoins. So people are attempting to short. Generally speaking, when you see continued short ratios being high, especially on the largest exchange like Binance, that's when you see liquidations happen that can boost prices even further. So that's something worth keeping an eye on. Now, at the same time, as of this latest day, we've just seen a huge weighted sentiment spike on the positive direction. So these two are kind of clashing right now. People are proclaiming across social media that they're very bullish on Chili's and talking positively about it. Perhaps they're bragging about their profits that they've had over the past two weeks. But meanwhile, behind the scenes, people are actually putting their money against Chili's at the time at this time. And that's indicative of uh, kind of, you know, the social aspect, which is bullish versus the actual, you know, call them ad more advanced traders, not necessarily institutionals, in institutionals, but retail traders that are trying to short and bet on Chili's tanking in the near future and profiting from that. So I would keep an eye on some major volatility coming up for Chili's. It did just see a sizable correction. So I wouldn't be surprised if this weighted sentiment spike was a kind of a, a communal push to buy the dip. Uh, that often happens, especially when a coin has been on a long run and then suddenly sees a one to two day correction and everyone says, oh, Chili's is still a great investment. Better get in. And that's causing this bullish spike here but the shorters are still short and away. Next up, Dogecoin. Doge has been a big grower just over the past week, going back to October 10th. If I hold down shift and drag to the right, it's up approximately 24 to 25%. So it's been a among the leaders in meme coins after spending a long time being disappointing uh, while Bonk and Whiff and Floki and some others have been much better meme coin performers, but finally Dogecoin has had a chance to shine up, you know, 25% in just a week is certainly substantial enough to draw attention. And as a result, we've seen its token circulation or its amount of unique tokens moving from wallet to wallet at the highest point it's been, not just in the past month, if I go back even further, we have to go back to the huge market-wide dip on August 4th before we last saw a circulation spike of this magnitude. And then whale transactions, especially those that are $100,000 or more in value, we saw 732 of them a couple days ago. And this was indicative that we might be seeing a bit of a top, which we did the next day. But sure enough, it's continuing to grow. So whale transactions spiked on the 15th and then circulation spiked on the 16th. So I'm very interested to see which way things continue to go. Um, generally, more and more circulation is a good thing and can drive rallies even further upward. But if you see whale transactions continuing to spike or potentially even surpass what we saw on the 15th uh, in the next few days, that would be a sign that we're seeing a, another correction that, that maybe the retail traders and the the crowd can't keep up with. 
Next up, Litecoin. I put up a post earlier today about Litecoin. Um, it's seeing a huge uh, rally in terms of transaction volume. In fact, if I go back all the way to the past year, look at how much transaction volume has grown over time. It's just a continued upward trajectory with very few times that it's actually retraced. So, you know, just to draw an approximate line, it looks something like that. I mean, we've got 967, 970K going back to October of 2023. And now we're looking at almost 4 billion in transaction volume dollars per day <coughs> going on right now. So that's substantial. Um, and in the meantime, social dominance has also spiked to its highest point since July 4th. That's when markets had a bit of a retrace, not quite as big as the August 4th one, but um, this was during a downtime where a lot of people were talking about Litecoin negatively. Um, and I'm a little interested in, in this one because this isn't happening on this, you know, massive spike by Litecoin. It is seeing a mini breakout from the rest of the markets, but not to the same extent that we saw with Chili's and Litecoin. I'm just curious as to what's got the Litecoin community a little more excited uh, going back to the 13th, it is up 12%. So call it 3% gains per day over the last four days. Pretty substantial. Uh, I'd keep an eye on Litecoin. And then last but not least, uh, Maker. Now, this has been one of the biggest struggling assets going back to uh, late September. Call it about three weeks ago. It's down about 29 to 30% during that time. And very recently, going back to, yeah, yesterday, we suddenly saw this massive circulation spike and a massive daily active address spike. Going back a little bit to the past six months, this is the largest spike in circulation over this time. And it's the third largest, excuse me, yep, third largest, uh, fourth, barely, fourth largest daily active address spike over the past six months. So, <clears throat> activity seems to be picking up. And on this case, it's on a declining asset that's drastically underperformed compared to the rest of the markets. Therefore, I actually like this as a potential buy the dip opportunity. We'll see if the crowd catches on. Maker isn't the most talked about asset, despite the fact that it's the 65th ranked market cap asset. Um, and on top of that, I also highlighted age consumed here. Now, this shows that part of the reason that circulation and active address is spiked uh, may have had to do with a, a big age consumed spike. This is the second largest uh, spike of dormant activity. What we're doing is multiplying the amount of coins being moved by the um, age in which those coins had been sitting in a stagnant position uh, prior to them being moved. So basically, old coins are being moved at a rapid pace right now. The last time that happened, if I just hide these other two by holding down the Alt key, last time that happened was way back on June 13th, and it ended up kind of being a local bottom if you extend the range a little bit and look at the, the next, call it five weeks or so, it, it ended up going up 34%. So uh, token age consumed spikes are often big direction change indicators. I also note this one that happened right at the, the dip and it had a very short term spike and followed by a longer term uh, positive price performance. So this is encouraging to me. Nothing is a guarantee based on what I've shown today. Uh, none of this is intended to be investment advice, but more examples of how anomalies are analyzed and uh, identifying different metrics and how they are relevant to altcoins that might be outliers from the rest of the, the crowd at any given time. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you on our This Week in Crypto uh, in about 12 hours or so from the time this video is released. Talk to you guys then.